Um, this is probably one of the more personal songs I've written in a long time. And I remember just uh, when I started writing it, it was like, oh, this is, this is personal. Is this, am, I, am I ready to kind of get that out there and share this experience? Because in a sense, you know, when you go through, you know, panic attacks and you go through anxiety, um, you're like, am I, am I lacking faith? Am I lacking trust in the Lord? And of course you are, but are you wanting to show that and share that? And so, you know, five years ago, I'll kind of go back and five years ago, I remember, um, I just was going through this time where everything to me was overwhelming, where I remember my, my kids, I felt like if anything happened to them, they were a little bit of a sniffle. I'd be like, what's happening? Are they really sick? Is something bad happening? Is it worse than what I think? Or if they, you know, would ride their bike, I thought the worst, something terrible was going to happen to them. I was in this kind of place of irrational fears, basically. And it was really overwhelming. I remember like I got to the place where um, I started, my hands started shaking a ton and I'm like, what, what's happening? You know, why am I doing that? So, all right, I kind of like shoved it off a little bit and kind of moved on with my life and didn't really think much of it. And then I remember taking my girls to Uganda and I remember my daughter, she got the yellow fever shot and I remember she got really sick. And the, one of the things that I heard is that you can get the shot and, and literally the, the doctor told me, you know, your daughter can die from this shot. And so all of a sudden, all me, my fears and all these things, you know, I've always had those anyway, um, just came to, I think, a place where it was boiling up so much that I started freaking out. And so she got sick. I'm thinking the worst. Um, of course, I've went through losing my wife to cancer. And so I've been through that. So I know those things can happen. And I've been through those hardships and trials. And so I'm thinking the worst. End up, she ended up having the flu. Um, and so it was just that. But that something in that triggered me even more. And I remember going to Uganda and the whole time, just fear, fear that something was going to happen to my daughters. I took them on a missions trip. It was me, um, my daughter, Ari and Bella, and I was doing an outreach there and it was incredible. We had 35,000 people and, you know, a thousand people responded to the gospel. So rad things were happening, but inside I just had this overwhelming sense of just fear and worry and overprotection with my kids. Of course, I'm a protector. You, you should be as a father, but an overprotection where I wasn't trusting the Lord at all. So I remember um, we ended up going home and, and I'm, it's ramping up like shaky hands more like, you know, irrational fears like at night trying to sleep and then thinking something bad and someone's going to break in. I mean, just crazy. And I remember going to uh, um, Israel and we were visiting and, and, uh, it was a beautiful time. I remember walking where Jesus walked and having these incredible experiences. And I had this panic attack one night. And I remember I started, my body started convulsing in a sense where my body was shaking and I couldn't breathe. And, you know, it just started praying for me and I kind of calmed down. And then I remember, uh, you know, the next morning I was like, what was that all about? And we were leaving the, the next day to fly home. So I remember just like, I just want to get home. I've been to Uganda, I've been to Israel, I've been all over the world. I just, I need to get home. You know, I need some kind of stability. And so I got home and it was probably the second day or the first day. I remember um, my family went out to the grocery store. I was by myself and I was working out. And all of a sudden I did this set of push-ups, and I felt this weird welling up inside of me of panic that I can't describe. And all of a sudden this panic turned into where I couldn't breathe. And I'm on the ground, like trying to breathe. And I'm, I'm, I call my wife and I'm like, I need you, I need you here right now. And this kind of feeling of just hopelessness, like, what do I do? I don't even know what's happening right now. I've never experienced this before. So she came home and she's praying for me. And I remember just, um, her laying hands on me and just it really battling against the enemy, you know, battling against the fear and battling against the worry. And this happened, I, I remember going through probably Gosh, it was probably a couple of weeks where I couldn't go outside. Um, I couldn't get out of bed. I remember having these irrational, dark fears. Um, is there a God? Like things I've never thought of before. I mean, here I am, you know, been a Christian all my life, gone through hardships and seen God be faithful in massive ways. I mean, watching my wife suffer through cancer, go be with Jesus, and then him be faithful to, to walk me through it. So I've, I've known that he's there, but had these weird thoughts, and that was just the enemy. Until finally I said, God, what is it? Like, please tell me. And literally he spoke to me and said, uh, there's like three things. I'm not trusting him at all. I was like, Jeremy, why aren't you trusting me? I love you so much. 
And it was three things. It was my family, my future, and my finances. I, I call it the three Fs. You know, I had a, had a bad score. And uh, that was one of the things where until I finally realized what that was, and I had some bitterness in my heart towards really close person in my life and that had really hurt me in a very very tough way someone really close and i remember just had to let that go and i wasn't trusting god at all and you know i love the scripture that we all know it's proverbs 3 5 and 6 and i think it's it stemmed from this where i really was like i'm not doing any of this this is trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And I think for me, what I was doing was I was like trusting him with little things, but it wasn't all my heart. I was holding back things that actually became a burden or became this weight on me that I couldn't carry. And that overwhelming weight of lack of trust um, and me trying to hold on and control things got me to the point where I had a breakdown basically. And I was holding on to something I could not hold on to because really we're not supposed to. And so, Finally, there came a point where once I realized what that was, and I literally said, Jesus, forgive me. Like, I'm so sorry for not trusting you. I know you love me. Like, he just so gently, I love, one of the things I love about what he did is he, he gently and so compassionately walked me through that. It wasn't like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Why are you experiencing this? Why are you going through this? I told you, you can trust me. It wasn't that at all. It was, he knows our human nature. He knows that, you know, we need every single day to have that reminder of his love and his tenderness and his gentleness and his faithfulness. And so once I finally said, God, forgive me, I trust you. It was like that verbal, I trust you. And, and then God, you know, forgive me for having this bitterness in my heart. I remember it, that, that weight lifted off of me and there was a freedom that I've never felt before of just going, no matter what happens, even if the worst thing happens, God, I know I can trust you. And so I thought, you know, as I'm, a few years later, you know, I'm sitting down and, and I'm seeing all this happening and, and hearing about anxiety, hearing about fear from so many different people. So many people having breakdowns and, and couldn't, can't leave the home because of fear. And I was like, I want to write my experience and I want to share my experience. And it was scary because it was like, all right, here I go. Cause I know it's going to open up a lot of doors of like having to share this, but I know that God is the God of all comfort and that God has walked me through this in such a beautiful way how could I not share that? You know, it's like sharing of, hey, this is, this is the hope of what I experienced. It's Jesus and trusting him is the best way. And so I remember this song I was writing and it was very much real and vulnerable. It starts off saying locked up and I'm so in my head, heart starts racing and I can't slow it down, hands shaking and I'm losing my breath. It's, it's, it, I'm experiencing and I'm sharing what I'm feeling, like my hands shaking, losing my breath, you know. Um, and I think that it's, it's that realness for me that I'm really praying that God pierces through dark places in people's lives, like legitimately, because it happened to me. And the chorus is like, you're the light when my world feels dark. You know, you are the, you know, you know the hope when I'm stuck in the storm. Um, it, I, I think it's like that, that lyric of saying, you know, when my thoughts have, have run way too far, because that's the, the issue. It's like when you don't take your thoughts captive and you let them just go, um, that's when things get kind of crazy and wild. And that's what happened to me. Um, but it says, you're the calm for my anxious heart. Um, and I think that understanding that the only hope we have in the midst of anxiety and, and, and stress and fear is literally Jesus and understanding his love, understanding his faithfulness and understanding that, you know, that scripture says that we were the joy set before him to endure the cross. He loved us that much that he went to the cross because of his love for us. Um, that's what got me out of it. You know, it pulled me out of that dark place. And I really do pray this song encourages people to get out of that dark place and that God would truly be the refuge and their strength.